Hi everybody, this is the Trig 2 review and this is question 1b. Uh, we're going to solve this equation right here, but remember that we're solving it within the domain negative 180, so a, a, a negative half rotation out to a, through a positive half rotation. Okay, and Let's just take a look at the equation here. Cosecant squared minus cotangent minus 1 is equal to 0. Okie dokie here. Well, um, I'm, I'm running into a little bit of a problem here because I've got a cosecant and a cotangent, two different trig functions here. If, if I can't factor those apart, then I'm, I'm kind of stuck. So I'm looking here, what can I do to make this easier to work with? Now, before you jump on the bandwagon of thinking, well, I'll just convert this to, to 1 over sine squared, make this uh, cos over sine. Uh, yes, I, I wouldn't deny it. Yeah, that's, you can make that work. But let's, let's try to work smarter, not harder on this one. Um, I'm going to take a look for any kind of uh, identity that I can see just sitting here. And I can see one. Cosecant squared minus 1 is cotangent squared. So I can make a substitution right away. And not only, not only do I, I get rid of two terms here to make this, <coughs> sorry, this equation a little bit easier to work with, but I'm pulling out a cotangent. Okay, and so and I've got another one there as well. So that's actually a really good move because now I've got two cotangents here. And at this point here, uh, it's a quadratic. It's in the form of a quadratic. There are two levels to this problem. And now I'm facing the, the algebra part of this problem, not, not the trigonometry. The trigonometry is going to come back up here in a second. So the first thing I'm going to do here is factor that. And because there's only two terms, and this isn't a difference of squares, the best I can do is just pull out the common factor. So I'll pull out the common cotangent. Okay, and that's going to give me this right here. And so now either, in order for the product here to be equal to zero, either the cotangent of theta is equal to zero, or the cotangent of theta is equal to positive one. Okay, now let's just take a look at cotangent of theta is equal to zero. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay, so cotangent is going to go to zero in exactly the same spots that cosine goes to zero. If sine goes to zero, the whole thing will be undefined. So the only way that that expression can become zero is if the numerator goes to zero, if the cosine goes to zero. So now let's just take a look at our interval. Okay, so we're looking at a negative half rotation. We're looking at a positive half rotation. Cotangent is equal to zero. Now that's equal to zero when sine, sorry, cosine is equal to zero. And cosine, if you think about the unit circle, okay, if we, if we were to draw the, the unit circle on here, okay, where this is 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, uh, 0, negative 1. This is just an easy way for me to kind of keep track of, of sine and cosine when they're at the extreme values here. Cosine is related to the x-coordinate. So when we go around here, well, right here, this is where the x-coordinate goes to 0. 90 degrees, okay? The other place where the x-coordinate goes to zero is down here at 270, but 270 is bigger or is outside the, the domain here. Now, it is, however, inside this negative rotation. So what I've got here, the two possible answers would have to be theta is equal to 90 degrees or negative 90, okay? And there we go. And I'm, again, I'm getting those from the unit circle and just comparing that to the, the domain that I've been given here. Now let's take a look at the second factor that we've got here. Cotangent is equal to 1. Okay, well maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't like working with cotangent here. Well, I know cotangent is 1 over tangent. And so I'm going to reciprocate both sides here. And I get tangent is equal to 1. Oh, okay, okay. Tangent is equal to 1. Well, this is a little bit easier to work with because I know about tangent. Okay, tangent, first of all, is positive, okay, in quadrants 1 and 3. And again, I'm looking at a positive half rotation and a negative half rotation. So I can see two possible solutions here. When tangent goes to 1, the reference angle is going to be 45 degrees. So if I follow along this positive rotation, notice that I'm going to very quickly hit my terminal arm, so that angle there has got to be, okay, one possibility here has got to be 45 degrees. 
But that finishes up my, my positive rotation. There is no other uh, terminal arm along that positive rotation. So now I'm going to take a look at my negative rotation, and I do hit the terminal arm right here. Okay, that would almost be negative 180, but I'm short 45, so this is going to be negative 135 degrees. And so those are my solutions here, 90, negative 90, 45, negative 135.